Uh, as we wait for our rings to show up, probably going to be here, what's today? Today's Wednesday, probably Friday. We're just doing some odds and ends in the uh, garage. Uh, I put these in backwards, these strut rod bushings. The bushings are fine, but the washers themselves in big letters say this side towards rubber. And of course I can read it, so it's they're on backwards. So uh, the factory ones were this direction, you know, the curve towards the bushing. But these ones are supposed to be opposite. I'm not sure why or what the difference is, but so I got to pull those apart and switch them around. So we're not going to film that, but I'm just letting you know what we're up to. Uh, another thing over here is the transmission. The filter we put in there is for a later style transmission. This transmission being a 64 has a two pumps in it one front and one back. So on the filter, they're on the bottom of the valve body, and we'll show you once I open it up. Um, this is the filter we put in there, and there's one hole for, uh, for you know the suction of the valve body to suck the fluid up. Well, on the rear pump transmissions, a friend of mine, Dave, uh, brought this to my attention. It should have two of these, and I did notice a second hole on the, on the uh, valve body, uh, so this is the wrong filter. Um, today, while I was in town during work, I phoned a couple different uh, auto parts places and neither of them had stock nor listings. In fact, the guy at Napa said that a 64 Chrysler never came with a 727, according to his book. I said, well, I know what I'm talking about. That's not correct. And then he said, oh, it came with an RH this and that and, and uh, a 904. And I'm saying, well, it didn't come with a 904, so that's incorrect again. But anyway, I'm not sure if they're calling it something different than a 727. But uh, anyway, he had no listing. He couldn't help me. Went to the other place. They don't even have it in their system. Um, so Rock Auto doesn't have it in their listing. So we'll have to figure something out. I mean, somebody somewhere, maybe uh, transmission rebuilders, they'll be able to get it from their wholesalers, I'm sure. It's obviously not a common item, but they got to be able to get it. So we got to pull that apart, find another filter. So that's not quite done yet. And then come down this way, show you another thing that Miss Shauna has been doing. We got our steering box back from the gentleman who rebuilt it. Um, he put three new bearings in it. It's got roller bearings like in a, in a little cage. Uh, he put three bearings in and all the seals and all rings and stuff. So, and then he adjusted it and he says it's, uh, it was in really good shape inside. So uh, that should be good as new or as good as 1964 new anyway. Um, so that's ready to go in. Um, yeah, so all we're waiting for on that to put that in, we got the little rubber uh, coupler bushing too. All we're waiting for to put that in is Shauna had some paint mixed up and she's got to paint the steering column and probably the dash to some degree. So uh, we can put this in, we just can't hook up the steering column to it because it's not ready to go. But So we're just picking away at some oddball stuff here tonight and if anything of interest comes up, we'll, we'll film it. Otherwise... Uh, We'll put this video out tomorrow when we add some more to it. Okay. We got them both switched. You can see here how it curves out. I had them the opposite way. Um, I suspect it's probably to give it more lateral movement, rolling on the edge or something. I don't know. But uh, it does make sense when you can visualize the uh, suspension going up and down. So. Anyway, they are correct, and it doesn't say this side to rubber anymore, so I know it's right. Shauna has the air sander going, and she's getting the column ready for paint. While Shauna's sanding, I took out the pistons yet again. But that's okay. We'll have the new rings in there, and it'll be a better engine for it. It's another day. Uh, this uh, video segment is just going to be 
a bunch of little stuff taken up over the last week. Uh, haven't had a lot of time out in the shop. I've got stuff going on with my commercial truck and trying to prioritize that. So this just gets shoved to the back burner. Anyway, we'll put up a video tonight. Today's Sunday, February 18. And uh, we'll have something coming. It'll be mostly a compilation over the last, you know, probably four or five days. So we got our rings in. We ordered them from Rock Auto. Um, and they are the wrong ones. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. So if you come over here and see, this here is the, the rings I'm taking out. So these would be the standard bore rings, but they're, you know, worn. And if you look at the, gra the gap there, that measures 40 thou th thousandths of an inch. Um, stock in uh, the manual says maximum 25 thou. So, I mean, they got some war 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 or wear on them, which is understandable. So, that's what we're taking out, and I'm going to show you what I received. So, I had to double check this number to make sure it's the right one, and it's the right part number for 413 standard bore but I'll show you what they sent me so this was packaged wrong the labels correct but the contents are wrong and I'll show you how I know okay so we'll pop this ring out we'll open the box and we'll grab one of the compression rings out and We're going to put this in the bore and then we'll slide it down the exact same amount I just had that last one in, which is right to the edge of the piston here. Okay, actually I want to do that different. I want to put the gap on top so you can see it in the camera better. So we got it in there. We're going to lower this down and there we go. Okay, so if you can zoom in there, Shauna, you can see the piston ring gap we are dealing with. That is just slightly shy of a quarter inch. Now, the stock bore on a 413 is 4.18 inches diameter. And you can see there's no way you can run piston rings with a quarter inch gap. And the other thing too, upon looking very closely, about from here to here and about from here to here, the outside ring is not even touching the wall. So there's a gap there as well as the big gap. So what I did is I took some calipers, I compressed these all the way and measured them. They measure at four inches, 0 0.09 thousandths. And you add a little bit of a gap that gives you about 4.12 inches. That is a standard bore 361 big block. This is a 413. So these rings are 4361, but they were packaged as a 413. Well, we can't use those obviously. So now we got to talk to Rock Auto and get the correct ones sent. And I'm hoping that they don't send another box of the exact same thing. But it's just human error, things happen, but wrong rings. So we're not putting this together for at least another week till we get the proper rings. And then uh, aside from that, we are gonna put, we showed you the rebuilt steering box. I'm gonna bolt that in loosely. I'm not gonna adjust it for the column because Shauna's not done painting the interior. So I'm gonna bolt the column in and the pitman arm to the front suspension because we have to roll this off the lift and out the door because my son is coming today to put the transmission in his diesel truck. So he needs the lift. So we'll just put this together so our wheels don't go like this when we try and push it or tow it or whatever. And uh, we'll get that put in here shortly. Sure. Steering box is in. Just temporary because we're supposed to have the column all mounted up as you put it in just to make it easier to get to the collar on the bottom but we just need it so we can keep the front wheels parallel while we're moving it around and kicking it out of the shop. I also picked up a new seal for the tail shaft 
This is the original. It's got a Chrysler uh, logo on it. And it wasn't le currently leaking, but I thought we'd just replace it while it was out. So we picked up this new one. And it's uh, very similar. I mean, the dimensions and everything are the same. It's just uh, I noticed the ceiling surface right here is not as wide as the original. I'm not sure if that'll make much difference or not. So we'll pop that in there, put a bit of sealant, and then uh, the yoke goes back in. And incidentally, this yoke, it's got a bit of a groove right there where the seal runs. So I'm gonna have a look to see where the seal goes on the tail shaft there, and maybe I can either put it in or out, just a slight difference so that the, the seal lip will ride in a different position, you know, as opposed to right in that same groove. And the other thing I noticed is it's got a bearing right at the back here. Uh, later model torque flights have a bearing intermediate somewhere up here and they just have a bushing here. So I'm not sure if this has uh, double bearings or what, maybe because of the the extra weight of the yoke on the end there, I'm not sure, but uh, definitely better built uh, if that's the case, if it's got two bearings. That's it for this hodgepodge video. Thanks for watching. It's just, like I said, a compilation, but uh, we have to kick the, the whale out because my son has showed up and we got to bring his truck in. So we'll see you next time.